Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM's debt and tariffs are back in the spotlight after it reported a big loss and appeared before the regulator seeking higher tariffs. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. ESCOM's unsustainable debt position came to the fore again after it reported another big loss. Yes, 20 billion rand, which was not a surprise. It had a similar type of loss last year. And the debt level continues to tick up around that 480 billion rand mark. So the issue is, you know, if you have big debt, but you've got the revenue to cover it and to sustain it, then it's no problem. But the issue with uh, Eskim is it's clear that it can't. It made an operating profit of about 9 billion, basically, because it had tariff increases. Its sales fell again. But uh, after pay of debt repayments of about 31 billion rand, we see this big loss of 20 billion. And we can expect into this current financial year, which we're now more than halfway through, a similar type performance from Eskom, because they pay got debt repayments of 96 billion rand this year. That's 2 billion rand a week, if you do the calculations. So they've got a huge repayments. And again, they're not going to be able to cover that through revenue increases, which are, they'd had some tariff increases, um, and, but sales continue to flatline and probably be worse with COVID. And the debt repayment figure continues at the sort of 70 billion rand level in the, f in the subsequent financial year, and then plateaus at around the 60 billion rand level. But at that operating profit level around 10 billion rand, they're just falling well short. So they're in an unsustainable so sustainable position. And they're saying that they need their debt to be at around 200 billion rand to make it sustainable. What are some of the options for dealing with this problem? Well, we know that there was this compact at NEDLAC in September where government, business, labor, and community agreed that Eskom needed some support in getting this uh, debt under control, getting some sort of new structural solution for the debt. As I mentioned, Eskom believes at around a 200 billion rand level rather than the 480 billion type level, it could be in a position to repay debt and oper uh, operate financially sustainably. But the options are apparently have been canvassed, uh, are, are known to the insiders, but I suppose none of them will be palatable. And uh, there's issues, you know, Casatu has come forward with a proposal, a special purpose vehicle that taps into workers' pension funds. Um, there's obviously a lot of water to fly under that bridge. But I think we are in a serious mode of looking at those options, weighing up the, the strengths, the weaknesses, the difficulties, the downsides, what it means eventually for taxpayers and consumers. But at the moment, uh, all, that's, all the only way that Eskom is remaining a going concern is that you and I as taxpayers are continue injecting money into the utility. 49 billion was injected in the last financial year. The current financial year will be around allocations of over 50 billion and around 30 billion for the subsequent financial uh, year. So unless there's a resolution to the, the debt crisis, uh, there will be the taxpayer is going to be on the hook. There are also more tariff hikes on the cards. Yes, now that's the other lever that Eskom would like society to pull and would like the regulator to help them pull. We know that they're, they're in a tariff cycle at the moment, uh, into their last year of the, or second last year, I think, of the tariff cycle. Um, and that uh, they are due an uh, increase of around 5% uh, from April 1 next year. But we know also that there's been regula regulatory clearing account decisions, so 13 billion. So how the re regulator decides in liquidating that 13 billion will have an influence on the tariff. Eskom wants the full amount liquidated, which will see the tariff rising closer to 10% from April 1 if the full amount is liquidated. Then there's this whole complication around the court cases that NERSA has lost uh, with regard to Eskom, uh, both on a revenue application, they, they lost that, and Eskom's looking to recoup an additional 5 billion from the 2019 revenue application. And then through three RCAs for 2015, 16, and 2017 financial years, it's been remitted back to NERSA to relook at that because certain amounts that were disallowed, the court felt uh, should not have been disallowed. So there's that process, a supplementary application that accounts for about another 26 billion rand of uh, claims by Eskom, over and above what has already been approved through those RCAs. And then we know that uh, um, 
is a nurser illegally locked the 69 billion rand of equity injections um, from taxpayer uh, off Eskom's revenue, and that has to be put back. The courts stated that that should be automatically uh, put back, and the first 23 billion of that should be automatically reintroduced um, from April 1 next year. But there has been a, um, an appeal to that, and uh, NURSA has been given the right to appeal, but Eskom's made an application to the courts to have that uh, first 23 billion re-added to their revenue from next year because they say that, that NURSA is not contesting the merits of the case. NURSA has agreed that that 69 billion should never have been taken off uh, its revenue allocation. Uh, so they're saying we should, by all rights, get that 23 billion rand. And that's the sort of figure that Eskom says they would like for uh, the 20, uh, so not just the 13 billion, they would like it to be around that 23 billion rand from next year and all of that to come through, that's what they need for going concern status. That will mean that the tariff will be above the 10% type level from April 1. But it's a process, as we know, these, these public hearings underway and uh, NURSA has the final say on this. But I think we can at least expect that the tariff won't be around the 5% level. It will be somewhere between 5 and or 15% at the outer limit, but I think 5 and 10% that we should be expecting as consumers, which uh, in the current environment I think is going to be very difficult. We know that most businesses are struggling uh, post, uh, well not post-COVID, we're in the midst of COVID, but recovering from the lockdowns. And uh, this uh, additional weight around the consumer as well as big uh, electricity uh, intensive businesses is going to be di uh, another uh, sort of difficult uh, component to navigate as we try to seek a, a way out of this um, uh, out of this very deep hole that we're in economically and find a way to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.